Welcome back. In this section, we'll be talking about graphs of equations with two variables. Now, you may have remembered from your earlier days that one way that you could create the graph of an equation is to use a, a table of values, to pick values for the x-coordinate and then use them to find out what would be the corresponding value for the y-coordinate or vice versa. And the reason that that works is because any point that you'd like to have on a graph would be a point that would satisfy the original equation, a point that would make the left side and the right side of the equation equal to each other. And so if you pick a value for x, you can then find out what would be the value for y that makes left side equals right side, and that gives you a point on your graph. Now, I say that it's not a very good way for you to get an idea of the shape of a graph because, as we're going to see in the future sections, a lot of the graphs that we might be interested in really are just transformations of simpler shapes. Uh, but that's something that we'll see in the future. Right now, in this section, we just want to talk a little bit about graphing and some properties also of these graphs of equations. So for something like this, where we have an equation and we'd like to know which of these points, if any of them, happen to be on that graph, then the question is, which of these points, if any of them, satisfy that equation? And so to find out if a point satisfies an equation, we'd have to check to see whether the left side and the right side are equal to each other when we substitute in that value for x and that value for y. So for the first point that I'm looking at, 1, 1, I would substitute in 1 for x and 1 for y in both the left side and right side of my equation. So on the left side, there's just a y, and we're putting 1 in for y. On the right side, where there's x in the side of the square root, and we're putting in 1 for x. And the right side simplifies to give me negative 1. So left side and the right side are not equal to each other, which means that 1, 1 is not on the graph. And then we can do the same thing with the other points. So for 4, 0, we'd ask ourselves what happens when we put 4 in for x and 0 for y. The left side of the equation, y, would just be 0, and the right side, would be square root of x, square root of 4, minus 2, and that is equal to 0. So for that, the left side and the right side are equal to each other, which tells us that 4, 0 is on the graph. And let's do the last one. So the point 0, negative 1. Putting in negative 1 for y makes the left side negative 1. Putting in 0 for x makes the right side negative 2. And there we go, the left side and the right side are not equal to each other. So that means that the point 0, negative 1 is not on the graph. Okay, so now we actually want to graph this, to plot this, and so what we'll do here is make a table of values. And so we already had one point that we found out. I'm going to draw my little table of values here on the top left. I'll make a little chart. And so for this, we would need to either select a value for x and then use that to find out what would be the corresponding value for y, or the reverse, you could select a value for y and then solve to find out what would be the corresponding value for x. Now for here, since this equation is written as y equals, then it makes more sense to just pick a value for x because then once you do, you can easily find out what the value for y would be. Now one thing that's also obvious here is that we've got a square root of x, which means that if we're thinking what values of x can we actually have on this graph, the only real numbers that we would have for square root of x would be if x were 0 or larger. So the smallest value of x that I could put in would be 0, 
And so the y value would be square root of 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. I'm going to be choosing my values wisely here because, of course, square root of things that are not perfect squares, that won't turn out to be a nice whole number. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily want to put in a 3 in for x. So I'll choose a little wisely here by maybe putting in 1 for x because square root of 1, we can calculate that. That is negative 1. And 4, we can also take the square root of that. Square root of 4 is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So we've got about three points now. We've got the point 0, negative 2. We've got the point 1, negative 1. We've got the point 4, 0. And this is where we're maybe a little bit let down by graphing via plotting the points. If you already have a rough idea as to what square root of x minus 2 might look like, then these three points would be enough for you to be able to figure out what the graph should look like. But if you don't already know what square root of x minus 2 looks like, then maybe three points isn't enough. Maybe you'd need four points or five or more. I do know what square root of x looks like. I know what the square rooting function looks like, and it should have that sort of a curve to it, continuing forever on the right and going up as the x values increase. So I know that this should be what the graph looks like, but of course, if it was something more complicated, you might not know what the graph already looks like. So we're going to need better ways than plotting just points and connecting the dots. A um, couple of things just to mention as I go forward. I will talk more about uh, my expectations for graphing in the next section for this course, but I just want to mention it up front. You might notice that I have in my x-axis that it's been labeled, that my y-axis has been labeled. You can see that I have labeled tick marks on the x-axis and the y-axis. Those have been labeled as well. And you'll notice that I did some labeling of some points here. Uh, two of the points I didn't bother to label because they were right on the x-axis and on the y-axis, but I did label the coordinates for that point 1, negative 1. And just to finish things off, I'll also label this graph with its equation. And that's something that I'm going to expect when we do our graphing. I want things to be as well labeled as possible. But again, we'll talk more about that in a future section. So one of the features for an equation of a graph, or graph of an equation rather, is intercepts, x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Where does the graph cross the x-axis? Where does the graph cross the y-axis? And depending on what the equation is, it might cross both axes, it might cross only one of them, it might cross repeatedly, it might never cross. But the idea is that if you're looking for x-intercepts, this would be, again, where you're crossing the x-axis. And anywhere on the x-axis, you would have a y-value of 0. So if you want to find x-intercepts, let the y-value be 0 and then solve for x. Similarly, if you're looking for a y-intercept, you'd be looking for where you cross the y-axis, and anywhere on the y-axis, the x-value is 0. So you would let the y val uh, x-value be 0 and then solve for y. Uh, the one little thing I want to be careful about here, just to keep in mind that when we're thinking about intercepts, we're thinking about points. And so if we're talking about a point on a graph, we really should be expressing it as an x-y point. We sometimes might get a little bit sloppy. Uh, so, for example, you might say, oh, the graph crosses the y-axis at y equals 6. And so you might casually say, oh, the y-intercept is 6. But really, the y-intercept is a point. So you really should be saying the y-intercept is 0, 6. Okay, so we want to find the intercepts for this equation. We want to know where does the graph of this equation cross the x and the y axes. So I'll start with the x-intercepts. And I'm going to do that by letting the y value 
be zero. And that means that in this equation, all of those terms that involve a y are going to wind up vanishing because we would have 4x squared minus 16x plus 9 times 0 squared minus 20 equals 0. And so that term with the y is now gone. Now at this point I just need to solve for x and I notice that for this equation everybody could be divided by 4 so I'll divide the equation left side and right side by 4 and then at this point it factors really nicely as x minus 5x plus 1 and so we can solve and find that x needs to be 5 or x needs to be negative 1 so that means for our x-intercepts we have two points one point is 5, 0, and the other point is negative 1, 0. And then we're going to do the same thing for our y-intercept, except for the y-intercept we'll be letting the x value be 0. And much in the same sort of way, these two terms involving x's will vanish, so that the only thing that would be left would be 9, uh, 9y squared minus 20 on the left side and 0 on the right. And if we move the 20 to the other side and then divide by 9, we'll have y squared is 20 over 9. And so now we can solve for y by taking square root. So y should be plus or minus the square root of 20 over 9. And of course, as always, anytime we see a square root, we're going to need to simplify things as much as possible. And so in the denominator, square root of 9, that would be just 3. And the numerator, square root of 20, in simplest terms, that would be 2 root of 5. Square root of 20 is square root of 4 times square root of 5. So we have then two points. One point is 0 comma positive 2 root of 5 over 3, and the other one being 0 comma negative 2 root of 5 over 3. And those are my x-intercepts and my y-intercepts. So my two x-intercepts, 5, 0 and negative 1, 0, and I have also two y-intercepts.